Today I will discuss about corneal astigmatism and internal astigmatism in contact lens practice. The astigmatic power that we get in retinoscopy or autorefractometer is total astigmatism of our eyes. This total astigmatism can be of only corneal astigmatism or combination of corneal astigmatism and internal astigmatism. Internal astigmatism which is also known as residual astigmatism is the amount of astigmatism from crystalline lens that is lenticular astigmatism or other structures of eye like vitreous retina etc altogether or alone clinically corneal astigmatism can be identified by using a keratometer but specifically how much astigmatism is caused by lens or other internal structures of eye is not possible to identify Thus, clinically we concerned about corneal astigmatism and internal astigmatism which is important in contact lens fitting for astigmatic patient. Now two questions arise. How to differentiate corneal astigmatism and internal astigmatism? And why does identifying internal astigmatism is important for contact lens fitting in astigmatic patient? Don't forget to attempt quizzes at the end of the video. How to identify corneal and internal astigmatism? The formula is TA equal to CA plus IA. Here TA equal to total astigmatism, CA equal to corneal astigmatism, and IA equal to internal astigmatism. If total astigmatism equal to corneal astigmatism plus internal astigmatism, then internal astigmatism equal to total astigmatism minus corneal astigmatism. Let's see an example. A patient with minus 1, minus 3 at 180 degree axis has keratometer reading of K1 42 at 180 degree and K2 44 diopter at 90 degree. What is the total astigmatism, corneal astigmatism and internal astigmatism? Here total astigmatism is minus 3 diopter at 180 degree axis. As we know that the astigmatism we get in retinoscopy or autodefectometer is total astigmatism. So total astigmatism is minus 3 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. Now let's see how to identify corneal astigmatism. The numerical difference between K1 and K2 is corneal astigmatism. So corneal astigmatism equal to 44 minus 42 or corneal astigmatism equal to 2 diopter cylinder. Here patient is having in horizontal meridian 42 diopter and in vertical meridian 44 diopter. Vertical meridian is 2 diopter steeper which will require minus 2 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. So corneal astigmatism is minus 2 diopter at 180 degree axis. Now how to identify internal astigmatism? We know the formula is internal astigmatism equal to total astigmatism minus corneal astigmatism. Here total astigmatism is minus 3 diopter cylinder and corneal astigmatism is minus 2 diopter cylinder. So internal astigmatism equal to minus 3 minus minus 2. Internal astigmatism equal to minus 3 plus 2 or minus 1 diopter cylinder. So internal astigmatism is minus 1 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. For this patient total astigmatism is minus 3 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. Corneal astigmatism is minus 2 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis and internal astigmatism is minus 1 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. Now importance of internal astigmatism in contact lens fitting. We know that hard contact lens can correct up to 3 diopter cylinder of corneal astigmatism. So if a patient has corneal astigmatism up to 3 diopter cylinder we can correct this astigmatism with a spherical hard contact lens without toric design. Suppose a patient having a contact lens power of minus 1 diopter spherical and minus 3 diopter cylinder at 180 degree axis. This can be corrected with a spherical 1 diopter hard contact lens if the whole astigmatism is corneal. But if the patient has internal astigmatism of even 0.5 diopter cylinder a hard contact lens can't correct it. Now another question comes, 
why does hard contact lens not able to correct even very small amount of internal astigmatism but can correct up to 3 day after of corneal astigmatism let's see in the next slide we fit hard contact lens on flat meridian so in the steeper meridian there will be a gap between hard contact lens and the cornea in this gap or space tear accumulate and form a tear lens which can correct certain amount of corneal astigmatism that is up to 3 day after cylinder for hard contact lens due to corneal astigmatism the curvature of meridians of cornea changes which allow tear lens to form when a spherical hard contact lens is fitted in flat k and can correct certain amount of corneal astigmatism but internal astigmatism is occurred due to changes in the curvature of crystalline lens or other structures that doesn't affect the corneal curvature thus tear lens can't form in internal astigmatism and can't correct any amount of internal astigmatism so in contact lens practice when a patient is having astigmatism we have to identify whether patient is having corneal astigmatism or internal astigmatism then if corneal astigmatism is up to 3 day after cylinder then go for a hard spherical trial lens if a patient is having internal astigmatism or corneal astigmatism of more than 3 day after cylinder then we have to choose a hard toric trial lens for the trial if the patient is having internal astigmatism the front toric design is preferable as astigmatic power is incorporated in front surface of the contact lens that interact with the eyelid not with the cornea in back toric contact lens power is incorporated inner surface of the contact lens that can alter corneal shape if corneal astigmatism is not there if both corneal and internal astigmatism is there then bitoric contact lens design is also available in bitoric contact lens corneal astigmatic power is incorporated in back surface of the contact lens and internal astigmatic power is incorporated in front surface of the contact lens Stay with smart optometry and study optometry smartly.